Hey everybody. Hey everybody. Hey. Hey. What's up? <laughs> hey, it's Geronimo Jack's beard with <laughs> Sidekick Twenty Two and that other guy. <laughs> Is that what you say? <laughs> That's what you say, right? That's what we do. That is. I think that's how you Welcome to this episode. Episode. Happily ever after. Desmond's episode 611. Man, we're already at 611. Yep. Okay. We have just a. Well, we just have one thing, I think, to. One note today. Just this to talk about. Before we get into emails? Sure. Before we get into listener emails. All right, people. For Kimi. once and for all. Still on Kimi. We have posted this on Facebook several times. We've sent back, we've replied to emails about it. Beth numerous sent emails. sent the guy a message We directly. talked to Kevin. We talked, we looked at the script. Listen, people. I guess Kevin's getting harassed a little. I guess yeah, he like said. A, like, what did you say? Right, yeah, he was like. People are coming up to me on the street and, like, asking me if I said island. And he's like, no, I don't know where this island stuff came from. Right. The script says the word you. It does not say your island. Kevin says that he said you. He did not say anything about island. Now, Mm -hmm. I agree because I've gone back and listened to it several times. It does kind of sound like he mumbles island, but I think he just stumbles through his line. Which sometimes we do. And it's and he's Canadian. People so do it. People people stumble through their talking. Right. So he sounds, you um, know, like he might say something, but he didn't say it. Let's just settle this. It's for the people once who go like, I know what I heard. Exactly. And they're still stuck on it. So let's say okay, so okay. what if he says island? Yeah. What? What now? Yeah. Exactly. And he didn't. I mean, do you think this is going to be a big, you know, Kimi's going to be a big part of the final season loss? Do for we see Kimi again? I don't even think we do. No. So, there you go. There you go. There's your answer. Spoiler alert. <laughs> Spoiler alert, we don't see Kimi again. You let it go. Do we see him again? I don't remember. <laughs> I'll, I'll check. I think we don't. I don't think I don't we remember. do. Um, but even I mean, if even you, if we do, you can probably it has find nothing. out on IMDb. I'm sure IMDb probably has listed as to who was in which episodes by now. Oh, true. But even if we do see him, it has nothing to do with him saying your <gasps> island. Jake from Basing, Basing. How would you pronounce that? Basing. Jake from Basingstoke, England, Sounds asks: good. When a character's physical appearance is insulted or made fun of in the script, does the actor get warned by the writers or have any say in it? <laughs> uh, like you no. know. No, we don't really. It's we we read it in the script when we get it in the script. Jessica Stern of Portland, Oregon. When the writers are writing the scripts for many characters who speak languages other than English, do they write it in English first and then translate it later? Are there people who translate the script into Korean, Russian, Spanish, etc.? And what is the process for cast members to memorize lines in other languages, especially if it's a language they are not familiar with? (laughs) No, they write it in English. They usually pay someone to translate. There's uh, It's written like in italics in the script. In English, but... Yeah, and someone's job will be to translate it, and then um, they're usually available to go over it with us should we want to, and often they're on set for a lot of those those days, the days you shoot it. When I learned Korean, I I went to the translator's place, and we went over my lines... And, uh, I, you know, so I did it that he was kind of happy with it. Um, I had him say him for me. I had his wife say him for me. I had Yunjin say it for me as I worked on. I had two lines to do. And I um, recorded them, you know, just to work on it basically phonetically. And that's how I did mine. And, um, you yeah, know, that's really about it. Because I really had no idea what words were what. So all I could really do was match the sounds as best I could, and that's kind of what I did. Wayne Suji from Redmond, Washington, I hope I said that right, says, My all-time favorite monologue on the show was from the episode The Lie, in which Hurley tells his mom the truth about everything he experienced on the island. How difficult was it to shoot that scene? And did you memorize that entire speech word for word? 
Yeah, I did memorize that entire speech word for word. Because he says that he saw there were a lot of camera edits, like different angles. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't flawless every time, but... See, usually for me, the way... When I memorize stuff, and I say the line wrong, I know it's wrong. I may not know exactly what's wrong about it, but I get used... To, I've gotten used to saying it right from in practicing so many times. I know when something's off in the cadence or the rhythm. Um, so, sure, I like... Uh, I'm, I'm I'm sure I messed up on it a few times, but I, there were definitely takes that came out, you know, solid yeah. because usually we won't move on until we have you know two takes that we're confident about for each camera angle, and uh, and it was really hard that scene. I that was I wasn't sure how that one was going to work out and turn out. Uh, sometimes I do. I, 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 this, that was a great lesson for me that the actor is not always the best judge when he's actually in the scene doing it to know how it's going to turn out. Because I got uh, tons of great feedback on that that scene, mm-hmm. that moment. Right. Um, one of the things that was pretty cool in doing that particular scene was doing the monologue to the end, and then Bender saying, "Now start over again from that spot." Uh, from that like point in the emotion there, oh, uh-huh. and uh, that that kind of took it to another place, and that was pretty cool. Liam Brown from Cheshire, England. I know you and the numbers have a lot to do with each other on Lost. Do you have a lucky or unlucky numbers personally? No, not really. I mean, I like the number eight, and I like the number twenty-eight, <laughs> but That's... they're not particularly lucky. Well, your birthday's on the 28th. Yeah. Aaron from Brisbane, Australia says, Jorge, you often refer to Hurley in the first person um, during interviews, while most other actors I've heard talking about their roles typically refer to them as the character. Is this just a quirk of this particular role for you, or is this common to how you identify with all your roles? Well, in the numerous roles that I've had, (laughs) um, I, I think, I mean, when I was in acting class... I would talk about what I did in a scene, uh, saying me and I. Uh, I didn't talk about, you know, the character does this, you know, as far as when I made choices in in my acting classes. I try not to put too much separation, like the character's over here and I'm over here, at least when I talk about it. Um, I don't think I'm the character or anything like that. It's just... Uh, I I kind of interchange them in many ways, and in, in the same way that sometimes I'll I'll say the actor's name and then I'll say the character's name. Um, over the course <laughs> of the same discussion, I'll no, go back you and say forth. The, the character's name. Like I would say before, when I talk about the show, it would be I wouldn't talk about Jack doing anything. I talk about Matt doing something, mm-hmm. or I talk about Josh doing something, not Sawyer doing something, and then because we kind of. We this time we kind of really were taking the the role of trying to discuss this as like a piece of fiction or something. Right. Uh, that's that's when I started trying to use the character names more often. Christopher Baker from who knows? Didn't say the North Pole. Remember when Christian showed up on the freighter to tell Michael that he was no longer needed? If it's smoke, how do you do it? Smoky. smoky. If it's smoky, how do you do it? Yeah, and how and he was also in Christian Shepherd was also in the lobby of the doctor's office. Jack comes down and he sees him sitting there and then like the smoke alarm smoke detector goes off or something. It does. Yeah. Or the battery needs to be replaced or something. Some of that effect. So what is up with that? Well, well, there's, there. first of all, we're just talking. This guy just, we're not, I'm not going to answer anything about the hotel, that doctor's lobby, because this guy's question is just about the freighter. I know what I'm bringing that up. What if, what if it didn't smoke you? Problem solved. We don't have to figure out how he did it. <laughs> yeah, but what is it? So it's, so it's Jack's dad as a ghost? He's seeing his dad as a ghost? Well, maybe the smoke monster can... Not leave the island. So yeah, but he but he, he can't he can he he can get wet. 
my gosh. Right? What? You're going to say that he was actually on the freighter. Is that what you're about to say? I'm going to say, let's, let's just, There's let's no just, way. let's just, let's just, let's just start by accepting the fact, we're just going to play this idea, right? Let's say he was on the freighter. Let's just say it. Let's say he was on the freighter. No way. But go ahead. Then what? How do you get there? Right. So we'd have to accept that he can cross a little bit of water. Like I, like I was saying, he can't make it but off th- the island too far because he gets too tired and falls But I thought the they water. were like 40 miles out or something, weren't they? They were? Oh, maybe not. 40 miles? Well, no, I guess they could see the ship from the... Yeah, right. All right, whatever. Uh, so maybe he was close enough that he could still get to it or not. Otherwise, it could be, it could be a ghost. Like, I guess the, the Jack's doctor office, the lobby thing, uh, yeah, I guess that would be a good, a fine, like, okay, that's a ghost, whatever. But, like, Christian Shepard talked to Michael on the boat and said, you're not ready yet, or whatever he says. So, yeah. to me, it seems like it's someone a little more involved than just a ghost of Jack Stead. Hey, do you think Walt was the smoke monster when he tells Shannon they're coming and they're close before she got shot? Who says they're coming and they're close? He says they're coming and they're close? Yeah. He says that? Yes. I thought he just goes, shh. Oh. Well, Wait, what? He says they're coming and they're close at some point. He, one of his appearances, he says they're coming and they're close. Oh, when he says it backwards? Sure. Because he says something, but it's like... Yeah, he says they're coming and they're close. Oh, okay. So you think that that was the smoke monster? I'm asking, do you think it's the smoke monster? I don't know. Is Walt the smoke monster every time we see him when he says, Get up, John, out of the hole with the dharmas? Mm. You got work to do. Hmm. But but, but, but the smoke monster but, still thought to make him taller. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But like wasn't the, a, what, like a giant? Weren't we saying <laughs> that the smoke can only become dead people? Have you ever parked a car in your life? Weren't we saying that he can only become dead yes. people? Yes. Yes. Well, he's only become dead people so far. All right, everybody. We hope you enjoy this podcast. We recorded it on February tenth. It's getting hard that they're asking us all these questions, like. Oh, yeah? Well, how about the, we're the one who get all the weird anomalies about the past seasons and be like, so explain that. And we're like, uh, I, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, I know. Well, there's a lot that we can't explain. That we can't and we won't. All right, here it is. We'll see you on the other side. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Geronimo Jack's Beard, the lost podcast of Sidekick 22 and that other guy. This is our first episode. Um, since we started posting, actually. Since we started airing them. We have a few that we hadn't gone to yet. Yeah, we, the last time we recorded was Christmas, I believe. Yeah, so this is for the episode 611, yet I'm already shooting episode 614 now. Yeah. So we have a few. We have a backlog. I know. I have a lot of scripts to read. <clears throat> 611 is happily ever after. A Desmond script. Um, but before we get into... The Desmond script. There was one thing that I wanted to bring up that while we were watching the premiere again last night. Uh, last night we watched 603, 603 aired last night, What Kate Does. And they showed, like, the premiere. Right. Uh, again, before it. And there was this, the scene with Locke and Jack in the airport. Right. Um, when he's like, I'll try and fix you, you know, here's my card kind of thing. And Jack's, Locke says something like, what did you lose? I lost my knives or whatever. And Jack, Jack says, you wouldn't believe me if I told you. And Locke says, try me. I think people should start a new drinking game while watching Lost for those two exact lines to reappear. Because as I was reading every single script last night, 601 through, or no, 603 through the one we're doing tonight, 611. <clears throat> you read them all? I did. You scammed them all. No, well, I skimmed, some, I skimmed like, some of them. I said scam. You did. You sc- <laughs> you're down. It's a mix so between stupid. scanning and scamming. <laughs> but, um, <clears throat> I mean, I only found one other time when it's in um, one of the episodes. That doesn't sound like a very good drinking game. 
But I know it's been said many times in previous seasons, so people should watch each season, and then they'll have, like, three beers a year. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. I I, I don't... No, but, I mean, it's said a lot. I mean, like, the, the line, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, and then the line right after it, the person saying, try me. That's, like... That's, totally. That's, that's the only answer you have to and people who say that. I honestly that. have never said that in my entire because, life. Because. Never. But you have. I've never said either of those. You wouldn't believe me if I told you. Yeah. Try me. Because if anyone says to you, you wouldn't believe me if I told you, come on, you really want to know what they got to say because maybe they are a crazy person <laughs> and it's going to be awesome. But yeah, I, I mean, I noticed, what is this? We're doing 611 and in episode 607, Albert, um... Says it to Jack. Same thing. Try me. It's like a Jack yeah. thing. Jack says it, apparently. Um, I went through the cast list. Oh, right. This Go ahead. This is a big, big alumni episode. We have Dominic Monaghan returning. Jeremy Davies returning. Mm-hmm. Sonia Walger. Wait, is that the first time we see Jeremy? In this season, I think yeah. it is. Jeez. And Fisher Stevens. It was Sorry. during the shooting of this episode... That I met Alan Dale for the first time. Yes, me too. Uh, and he was quite lovely. We went into we went to oh what it was, I thought I went in for a haircut. I was wrong. I went to the studio to shoot that Nightline interview, and then we popped in to say hi to uh, Ian and meet Alan, and, um, and, and then I ended up meeting Shelley, Sheila, yeah, Sheila. Then and um, that's when they were torturing. Desmond in the box. The, then I met Fred later. Okay, what do you have first? Pretty cool opening. First, I have... I, I mean, I, I don't know. My questions are kind of weird, I guess. Like, immediately when when you see <clears throat> that Desmond is there and, and Widmore says, your wife and child are safe, I was like, where are they? Yeah. <laughs> where are Penny and Charlie? Where do we leave off with Penny... And Charlie, when he when Ben is shooting, right, and he's bleeding under the water, and but then do you Desmond see them? gets Desmond gets shot, and then I'm assuming right after that happened, because remember, um, he gets shot in the groceries, right, and I'm assuming right after that happened, he went to the hospital because he got but shot. We don't see that part, right? So that's well, what this picks she's up. somebody says something like, "You're no longer in a hospital." I think Zoe. Yeah, says well, it. he's uh, yeah. They said we had to move you from the hospital, right? right. So I think he went into the hospital, Widmore's <laughs> peeps got a hold of him, and then, um, so I'm like, so then Widmore's, because Widmore has, is saying still that he hasn't seen Penny in years, so right. he's not, he didn't physically go get her, so his, his peeps went and got her and took her somewhere, so well, I'm wondering where she man. is. Yeah, so then he beats <laughs> the crap out of Widmore. With the IV stand. Well, that's pretty awesome. Which at first I was like, yeah, but then when we met... Alan, I was like, oh, because he's so nice. <laughs> but he's like, but mm-hmm. it's, like, it's, it's, it's kind of a cool, like, you know, it's definitely like the last place Desmond wants to be. Yeah, Widmore says, duh, the island is not done with you yet. Which, what does that mean? It's because he's special or whatever, but but the island is not done with him like Michael wasn't done. Yeah, Widmore's it more and more, Michael. the more and more we learn about <laughs> Widmore, he seems more and more knowledgeable of, like, the inner workings on how the island does its thing, it seems like, don't you? Well, yeah, in this script, there's but still, a few things that... All the people who know all this stuff don't know and don't don't share any of that information. They just say, like, no, trust me, this is important. Now, um, your notes, again, divided by... No, it's just... It's Great, just that's straight good, it through. matches mine. What's your next one? <clears throat> My next one is that... So, um, so Widmore's peeps, they they all came to the island... And just like built this wooden shed. Yeah, all made out of wood. No nails. Yeah, how do you no build? Joists. How do you? How do you do that? Listen, back in the day, they had to make nails out of wood. Oh. Dowels. They did it with dowels. Oh, and that makes probably sense. That's how my old futon was made. Yeah, exactly. Another thing about Widmore's crew, <clears throat> they're more scientisty than army guys. Oh yeah. Well, he came back with you know these scientist people because. I mean, maybe he does have more like lackey or yeah, you know, like uh, probably does heavy because the kinda. same way that when he put together the people <laughs> in the freighter, right? There's like the you know, there's the but this is he's here for this thing, this experiment yeah. thing. Yeah, I mean, well, dude, the one guy, the the name of the rabbit is Angstrom. Yeah, 
Good catch, continue. Which is a unit of length. <clears throat> it's a unit of measurement of wavelengths of electromagnetic radiation. And do you know what else it is? Mm, it's also the name of the rabbit. And a physicist. <laughs> It was a physicist. <clears throat> Angstrom was a physicist first. And oh, then, it was? Yeah, they didn't just make up a name out of nowhere. He was a physicist who did, like, spectroscopy or something like that. Ooh, is that like colonoscopy? It kind of. Kind is of. it really? No. Oh. So, in the script, and I don't know if people are going to think this is a spoiler or not. So, I don't think that... What's in, sometimes I think things are not spoilers, and people now that we're getting comments are saying. So consider yourselves warned. Go so ahead. So warning. Go ahead. Um, in the script, it describes the light that starts emit that's emitting. You know what from I'm saying? Because it might have been a spoiler saying that the whole thing was made out of wood that people had to notice that there were no nails in it. Well, I don't think that that's a spoiler. But maybe if you kind of go around the building and there's just duct tape on the side, <laughs> they're like, "What's up with this yeah. gum?" <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> you guys are still gluing parts of it on. <clears throat> no, but the the script says searing white light is in, coming from the box thing. Yeah. Just like when the island disappeared. Is that what it says? That's what the script says. Yeah, that's what I thought. It's like basically they're making like... They're recreating. Um, yeah, it's kind of like the Hadron Collider. The what? The Hadron Collider. It's the thing that they're going... You know, when don't you remember there's that thing that they're they're trying to recreate the Big Bang... The big band? The big bang. The big band. Burning barrel. The big band. Hadron music. Collider. Dee, 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 dee. Glenn Miller. What? The Large Hadron Collider, the world's largest highest energy particle accelerator. Oh, God. Yeah, I know that nerd. They're doing experiments. You're such a nerd. Searing white light. So just... it's kind of like that, but it's kind of like a small version without doing. Searing white light, just like when the island disappeared. Yeah, so, so it's a way I'm to do it is... without blowing up a bomb. Okay, but my point is. Widmore has the ability to recreate and also keep at bay that power. Well, what it without is without turning is, the wheel or whatever. It's a way to do it without <clears throat> sinking the island. Wait, I'm confused. Well, you blow the bomb up, the island sinks. But does, maybe so if he does it with when, the shed. Wait, wait, wait. You're saying that when they turned the wheel and the island disappeared, it sank. It made a big hole in the island, and then the water all came out the top and drowned the island. No. That's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Some people Drown the island? Some people think that's how the island sank. <clears throat> but, no. listen. it's a, Yeah, right. It's a shed that can recreate the bright white light. Um, or... What's a solenoid? Sol- or solenoid? It's, or it can make Incredible Hulks. <laughs> oh, my God. How awesome would that have been if, if that's what had... Like, <laughs> like, they weren't expecting it. But then Desmond, like, his biceps just burst. What about... And he's like... Yeah, and then he becomes or the and rabbit. Starts, they put the rabbit in. The rabbit oh, becomes yeah. a rabbit Hulk. Oh god, that would be awesome. <gasps> rabbit Hulk. I'm writing that down. All right. Simmons. Is, Simmons gets fried. Simmons gets fried, and I think we saw the makeup. Is that what what Steve Laporte was making when that he had that like guy's face that had been burned? Remember we went into the oh, makeup trailer. Oh, maybe that is what that is. And he's like, oh, this guy got burned or whatever. I'm assuming that that's what he's gonna look like. Although in Whitmore. the script, it sounded more like he was. Toasty, like burnt. The crisp? Of, yeah. Like the guys that we I wonder up. what it's going to look like. Yeah. Widmore stops the people carrying the body for a second. It kind of says he, like, purses his lips and then throws the blanket back over there. But he stops him for a second. Simmons' body? Yeah. Why? I don't know. I didn't even notice that. He's like, he holds it. He goes, wait a second. He looks at it and goes, maybe... Yeah, he's pretty burned up, and he leaves. Like, like he says, like, yeah, he's pretty burned up. No, he thinks it. <laughs> oh, he thinks it. That's in the script. Widmore's no, thinking. No, no, but <laughs> Widmore's it's like, thoughts. I almost think. I almost entries. feel like he's waiting. Like, wait, wait, wait. He might still wake up. Oh, he thinks he's alive. I don't know. There's something. But I did notice when Desmond is questioning Widmore, what you know, what the heck are you doing with me here, or whatever. Widmore says, if everything I've been told about you is correct, then this will work, or whatever he says. Right. Everything I've been told about you, by who? Everything I've been told about you. Maybe. Because even in the script, it makes a point like, of the fact that he said that. Maybe and it's like, like everything what? I've seen about you on this television show. <laughs> yeah. It's true. You know, in that episode, flashes before your eyes. If everything I is true, it. when you turn that key, 
maybe it's me. Maybe mm. I told him because I thought he had superpowers when he came out of that. Mm. Uh, by the way, they asked Desmond. He has no metal, right? Just like. Later, they're going to ask him again. but Right, the parallel to the But MRI. they ask him, no metal, right? No change, no keys in your pockets. What is he wearing, sweatpants? Oh, because he has jeans <laughs> I mean, on? what about zippers and <laughs> buttons and stuff? Yeah. What kind of pants is he wearing? Parachute pants. <laughs> All right, people. Oh, oh. Go, go. Oh, oh. Go back to your TVs and freeze frame <laughs> and figure out his pants. Maybe he's not wearing pants. <laughs> <laughs> maybe they, No, seriously, maybe he's in his underwear. But he was wearing pants. Pants, right? When we saw But maybe they stripped him. Widmore has more knowledge than I realized how I said that. Because, like, he seems to know the whole thing about, listen, if this goes wrong, we're all going to hell, which is kind of like the thing that gets introduced in, like, Abiterno. You know, so the the whole thing. Oh, right. Like, if, if if this happens, if he gets off, the world as we know it everything is, over. is over. Your your wife, your yeah. kid, everything Not unlike, uh, dead. Yeah, same way like Desmond was saving the world back when he would hit the buttons. Right. Um, so I'm like, so yeah, wait. does Widmore know about the whole hell ramifications? Okay. I mean, I'm assuming he suppo- does. Supposedly I'm assuming he it. does because he know. You mean, okay. He obviously <laughs> knows that there's the smoke monster. He obviously right. knows that there's this evil. Right, he's on been island. around. Yeah, and he's been here a long time because he was here he know- in the 50s and then later when he learned to ride horseback and then. I when mean, he was sexy. He's been around. Yeah, I mean, I'm pretty sure he knows because when he when Locke goes over to the Hydra Island and meets up with Widmore, he says something like, I think he says something like, well, you're obviously not John Locke because he knows he would, that he was dead. And then he says something about, there's, I thought there was some exchange about him being the smoke monster. So oh, wait, wait, you're looking at your notes. Your, I should say your, something so that you So wait, time my to, point is, if everything I've been told about you, do you think that... Everything that he was told was told by Eloise? I don't know who told him. There's a really funny thing in the script that I can't share. Okay, so why'd you even bring it up? Anyway. Because. All right. Remember this part? No. <laughs> That's in there? Yeah. You could bring that up. I thought you no. meant it was a spoiler. No, I can't. Where is it? Is it a, That's a typo? <laughs> no, it's true. That's what happens. What? Well, it's not literal. What page is it on? Page oh. 11. Okay. This is distracting. We have to this tell. is just gonna drive them crazy. No, back up one more. It's gonna drive people crazy. Well, let's explain it without saying that word. It's just that Jin is looking really concerned. He's when something himself. <laughs> <laughs> the S word. If we were, you can't. Not, if, that's not, if we were to say an himself, audience. it's just funny though. No, but it says on Jin. Blanking. <laughs> on gin. Crapping. But with the S word. Ooh. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. It's so sad that <laughs> swear words and flatulence and stupid things like that make us laugh. That's funny. It is funny. Okay, so then there's the bright light. I think it was Jay who told me that and then we're back every on the... good podcast talks about farting. Really? Or pooping. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, I don't think fresh air does. Mm, I think so. Terry Gross, I think I think once. She did a whole like podcast about farts. Her own actually. She, she was, <laughs> yeah, she was like, here's uh Buffalo Gals, won't you come out today? <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um I hope she listens. Okay. Uh reflections are big this season, by the way. Reflections? Yeah, there's a lot of looking in the mirror moments. Like Jack looking well, in the mirror. Well, it's because Pumini. people are like. And there's a lot of that. Is that so, me? That's a big thing. I'm it's so the old. shots of the two. <laughs> what? The shots of the two faces, like you know, that's that's becoming a theme. It's kind of like the new close up on the eye. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Sorry, I had a burp at the same time I was trying to talk. <laughs> and I and I tried to hold it back. Okay, Consider. let's move forward. Okay, so you know, basic things. Then like, there's my big scene. Yes, you're only seen in it with at the baggage claim. Yeah. Great. Um, and then, so basically, like, Widmore and Desmond are, like, totally buddy-buddy now. I'm not even there yet. Hold on. Okay, but we need to move. Well, we don't have... You didn't talk about Desmond and Claire in the airport. You have no notes. Oh, yes, I do. I'll bet it's a boy. I'll bet it's a boy. Because I've been jumping back and forth from different know. realities, and I already know it's a boy. But does he By the know... way, you're going to name it Aaron. 
Does he know her, or does and he just sense? And your going to get because, jealous of me. Is it, like, a thing that's, like, oh, I'm just feeling this? Like that? Like, oh, I'm feeling it's a boy? Or he's more, like, inside of his head, he's like, I know this woman. I spent two years with her on an island or whatever. Yeah, you know, he, you know, uh, when... Is he conscious of every? Everything? I don't think he is. I think at first you, you weren't sure, but I think this episode shows that He's kind he's of going not. through us at the same time as us. Only right. He's, he's got, he's going faster through it because he's had help with people like Faraday and Charlie to, you know, yeah. make it, make him get there sooner. Um, like he has no memory of the boat model. Or like, so I he, thought. So it doesn't get deja vu for everything. I thought that the whole Widmore, um... Desmond, our best friends, the, the was a little overdone. A little bit. Especially when he pours... Nothing's too good, too good for, for you. you. What the <laughs> heck? Oh, my God. I just was like, oh, my God, really? Could you overdo it anymore? I feel like that some... I, I'm sorry, but I feel like some of the Flash Sidewayses are way overdone to be par- paralleled to the other island stuff. I really do. I mean, I even thought while I was reading this script, and I, I know I'm jumping ahead, but while I was reading this script and I read, and then the car went into the water, and Desmond got out, and Charlie was still on the other side of the glass. I was like, please, Charlie, don't put your hand up on the glass. I didn't want that to happen. But then, because I thought it would be too cheesy that it's happening again, but then when I, when I saw that that caused Desmond to flash... And and remember stuff. Then I was like, okay, it's 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 acceptable. It's cool. I think I also think that I also have an idea of a new game for people who watch the show. Um, I can't condone a drinking game, but I will I'll come up with a different kind of game. Uh, whenever in when you're watching the show, and I'm sorry, it's already at episode eleven that I came up with it. <laughs> if you're watching the show and suddenly someone says the title. Of the show. Of another episode. Oh, of another episode? From a previous season. Oh. You golf clap. <laughs> you golf clap? Gotta do something more exciting than that. What are you talking about? Whatever happened, happened? Yeah. Um, There's a few moments in, you know, in episodes when that comes out. It's like that. Maybe if you could combine that with Try Me. <laughs> try Me, with, yeah. That, yeah. We need a few me, other things. With, yeah. To yeah, not force we, it. We don't want to be, you know, we don't, yeah. Okay. I'll let you steer because I feel like I'm trying to get through it and you're more wanting to be... It's like Charlie has a death wish. He just kind of goes storm across the street. He does. Yeah, he ends up at the bar. He obviously does because he tried to kill himself on the plane. Do you Desmond remember? says, no title, <laughs> lots of perks though. Hmm. Like lady? Like hooking up bow, with chicken, the boss's bow, daughter bow, maybe? Bow, bow, no, not yet. Bow, 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 bow. Now, let me talk about that for a minute. Who is Penny's dad in this script? Because on the list, her name is Penny Mansfield. Later, Daniel Faraday says, she's my half-sister. Right. So she's um, not... Uh, her, name, her last name would be Widmore if the father was Charles. So who is Mr. Mansfield, Eloise Hawking's... Ex lava Mansfield, Mansfield. I mean, I don't... Uh, I mean, I guess it could be somebody that we've never heard of. I guess it could be somebody we have heard of, and they just have a different name, last name now, like Ethan is now Goodspeed, oh, yeah. or Penny is now Mansfield. I mean, she could be, you know, we could... I don't know. That was well, a big question. It's funny, I didn't really think... I didn't realize that when I read it. I, I didn't catch it. So that's a huge question, and I think it's one that will be talked about online, and I'd like to see people's theories and comments as, as to who, who, who is Mansfield. Who is Mr. Mansfield? Who is the father of Penny? Um, so when you get in a near-death experience, you will see the island timeline. Well, I mean, well Desmond and Charlie do, but who, yeah. else, who else has? Well, when Juliet was dying in the island world, it seemed like perhaps she had memories of an alternate when she starts talking to oh, when she... Sawyer about going Dutch. Oh. Oh, so I didn't even think of that. somewhere when you approach, when you're near death, more of the, let's say, universe, or unknown universe, is open to you 
to observe. Because, yeah, when Charlie was on the plane, that's when he saw Claire, the vision of Claire. When right, he was when he was choking. Dying. Right. There's a point... Yeah, well, Charlie says, um, bef- right before he drives the car into the water, he says, none of it's real. None of this is real. Hmm. So do we take what Charlie says literally? None of it's real? <clears throat> I don't know. Or is it just him being dramatic? I mean... You know, he saw Claire and then... Yes, I heard it, but none of it's real, or it just means, like, none of it's important. I don't know. In the, in the hospital, because we keep flashing back and forth, now, now Desmond is in the hospital after the car crash. And they, I think they ask him for emergency contact or something. Yeah, but we don't flash too far. I mean, it seems like we, we're in the alternate reality a long time before we finally come back to the island. And I think they ask him for emergency contact information. Yeah. And he's like, just put my boss down rubber. And there's a, I think, I don't know if it's in that scene, but basically somebody says to him or he says to someone that he doesn't have any friends, he doesn't have any family. Yeah. He's just kind of a loner. So do you think that in this reality he knows that he moves? It's like, you know, he, he's, he knows that he's moving time around. Time travels wife. Exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's like time travels wife. Um, do you think that he knows he's like that? So he's he's. I don't think he knows a, because I think this like is relation- a moment of discovery. He's keeping relationships at bay, or like he's saying, "No, I don't want to get involved because no, I don't. I don't know knows. where I'll be in five minutes or ten. Person, I don't think he knows. I don't think he knows yet. I think this is how, this is him finding out. Is this episode? There's an adorable typo, by the way, <laughs> when he's page? getting when he's getting his MRI. Yeah. Page thirty. Okay. When he's going down on the MRI, you know, it says that he's sitting on, like, the imaging bed. Imagining. And it says he's imagining <laughs> bed. Oh. Oh, I love that. Oh, that sounds sweet. Hey, sounds gang, like Disneyland. Let's all get on our imagining bed. <laughs> I'm a cowboy. <laughs> I'm a dragon. I thought you were going to say, I'm a drag queen. <laughs> That's your bed. Yeah. Oh, my God, I would love to be a drag queen. If only I was a man. Damn the sound it. of the MRI sounds like the klaxon alarm of the hatch. Um, I'm wondering if we are possibly, I know it's network television, so we might not see much, but if we're going to see maybe a little piece of Dominic's butt? Maybe. Because <laughs> when they said, the script said, and yeah. he's only wearing his hospital gown. <laughs> was, oh! was Desmond dressed already at that point? Did he get dressed? Did he? from Because the... wasn't he in a hospital gown too? Well, that's what I was thinking. So we're going to see... It'd be great if they're both running butt. around the hospital. And it's just but their butts. Oh! It'd be funny. Then Eloise says whatever happened happened. Oh, because he has to go and tell her that um, Charlie's not coming. And she seems... Everyone's like, this woman is Corrado de Dill. And then she's really <laughs> nice to her. Oh, that's what I was going to say is freaking Eloise wears the pants in the relationship with freaking Widmore. Are you kidding me? Widmore is like the man. It's and another, now he's like... It's another oh. time and place. Oh my gosh. But then she seems nice. But she knows. Well, she's not nice. Did you hear what she said? Well, that guy about the butter knife? Yeah, but she's but I mean she's, she's nice like, to Desmond. This is a high class thing. Let's treat it that way or something. <laughs> but like that. I mean she's nice to Desmond when... She's really nice to Desmond. Because Until... she knows stuff. Just like she knew stuff in that the scene where she's eating Until, the chestnuts. Yeah, until she hears Penny's name. Right. Wait, when Because is she... Penny is her daughter. When is she eating chestnuts? <laughs> Chestnuts roasting. Remember in the episode where she's like, "That man is wearing red shoes." Oh, okay. The and then old, she's okay. eating chestnuts because they're no. in London. I don't remember AKA she's eating Fort chestnuts. Fort Street Mall, downtown Honolulu. Yes, she, she, they, they went to like a chestnut um, vendor and got chestnuts. So she tries to stop Desmond from looking at the list, and she says, "They're not ready yet." You're not ready yet. There. No, she says, because you're not ready yet. No. Okay, let me bust Page 43. Let me bust ya. Yeah, I'm on page 43. You can't, because you're not ready yet, Desmond. Oh, busted. Man, it would have been so much better <laughs> if they weren't ready yet. Why? What, what were you thinking? What was your theory if it said they? It says you're. You're not ready yet, Desmond. You're not oh. ready to, you know... Get down with my daughter. Oh, that sucks. This is, this is what I was thinking. Someone has clearly affected the way you see things, and that is a serious problem. It is, in fact, a violation. Yeah, I know. A violation of what? 
The rules. The rules of the universe? The rules of alternate universes. A violation? So she is obviously, like, the queen of something. You know what I mean? Like, she is big time. Like, this whole time we thought, oh, it's Widmore. But she, in reality, in, I think in both realities now we're starting to realize she's, she's the man. She's the Wizard of Oz. She is. <gasps> she's Dumbledore. She knows all. Damn Even it. When she... I thought it was because they're not ready yet. I was so excited that they weren't What did you yet. think it was then? You had no theory? You just liked that it said they? Well, Here. it's better. Well, it's like Desmond's ready because he's going through the stuff, right? But I thought, it's like, listen, you're going to become knowledgeable about certain things. And the people who it's going to affect and that you're going to try and mess up, mess with, aren't ready to find this stuff out. Because... Oh, no. They're not having... You're talking about the people on 815? No, I'm talking about, like, he can't just go to Penny and be like, Hey, we oh. totally hooked up. Oh, I thought... You and know then you hated me, cool... and then you loved me, and then you hated me, and then you loved me, and but... then I called you on the phone, and Constance. But you know what would have been cool if... Now I'm coming up with a theory of something that doesn't even exist, but if that did say they're not ready yet, at the end of the script, Don't he asks it, for... It it. At the end of the script, he asks for the Flight 815 manifest. He says, yeah. I want to show them something... She could have meant them. Yeah, that's right. Uh, well, you know, it would have been it would have been cool. But it didn't say it. It says you're not ready yet. But I yet, know. but so she knows. She knows a lot that she's not telling him, which is frustrating for him and for us. Because <laughs> like, lady, just tell us right now. What is he not ready for? What's the violation? What's right. your deal? By the way, what for? Um, for Faraday's half sister. Mm-hmm. He's really all up in her business. He knows do exactly mean? when she's doing like a... Um, oh, a tour de stade? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, listen, uh, she goes and runs. I, I mean, I don't think she does that on a regular basis. Like, every day at 7 p.m., I go and run the tour de stade. Well, I mean, they could be, I mean, ha- you know, half sibling. <clears throat> the math stuff. The fact, the journal that he woke up and he had, that yeah. Faraday had written down all this stuff. I mean, it's just, it's the same thing, and, and Faraday explains it in this episode. He says, well, what if? <clears throat> you think there's going to be a connection because, like, um, Jack's kid's a musician, and... I, remember I said Dolan's that? Dolan's a music teacher. Remember I said that when we first um, now recorded that guy. podcast? That I was like, oh, maybe his son is Faraday, <laughs> but it wasn't. And then, okay, so then we're back on the island, and Desmond's like, oh, man, I'm so cool with everything now. You can do whatever you want to me. He's like all zen. Yeah. Isn't that weird? Yeah, it is weird. So, do you think he's been compromised now, too? No, I just think he kind of got a glimpse of the bigger picture somehow. Okay. Because I was like, man, he's really zen. Like, he's super weird. Yeah, he's like Jacob zen. Oh, and then, so then he's all zen, but then Saeed comes in and... Frickin' chop, chop, chops everybody again, or does whatever. <laughs> Some chops to the neck again. And he's like, run. They and love chops runs. to the neck in this season. Did he, ch- did he neck chop someone in this one? I thought so. I think it said <clears throat> he chops him to the neck or something. Maybe it didn't say chop. Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm just... And then the very last thing in the <clears throat> script is Desmond asking for the Flight 815 manifest. So we're wondering And what apparently is Minkowski is just the guy to get it for him. Yep. Which I don't understand, like... His connections. The limo driver. <laughs> the limo dr- Like, would you ever ask one of the guys who picks us up, hey, um, you know that flight we just got off? Could you give me no, the names but, of all the no, people on Minkowski's the flight? No, Minkowski's a cooler, it's a different kind of limo driver. He's kind of like the limo driver in Scent of a Woman. You know? I didn't see that. The limo drivers that kind of know the town. The, the limo drivers that are really kind of like the mayors of the town. <laughs> when they're driving limos, they know everybody. Oh, yeah, that's why they're driving limos, because they're the mayors of the town. <clears throat> anyway. He asked for the manifest, so I am a, I am excited to see the manifest. If what? The manifest. You say it like that in that one episode, so don't even make fun of me for saying it like that. I say the manifest. Yes. Do you want me to repeat what you say to sure. Josh? Sure, let's hear it. All right, I'm just gonna give it to you straight. I know you have the flight manifest, and I want you to give it to me. Okay, that's Boom. different. How is that different? Because you're acting. It's yeah. called a manifest. But you say it like that in there, and I think it rubbed off onto me. And that's, that's not how I, said I say it. that word. We just though. watched that episode not too long ago. I, it's because of the way, it's the inflection. It needed the inflection of the actual thing. My notes are closed. I have nothing else to say about this episode or the manifest. 
All right, everybody, that was our take on 611, Happily Ever After. And um, we'll see you next week. May all your dreams manifest. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, everybody. Hey, everybody, hey. (laughs) Hey, we just watched... By the way, the how great was that intro we did for this episode? It was so great. You would have thought we hadn't seen the episode hey. yet. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay. We just watched the episode. <laughs> what do you want to talk about it? Um, Penny's there... name is different. Yeah, that's the only difference that I saw was Penny's name instead of well, Mansfield was Milton or Wilton or Dilton. I wouldn't say it's the only thing that's different. What was the other thing that was different? What else was different was um, Fionula. Fionula? Eloise? Yeah. What's Fionua? Isn't that her name? Fionua? In real life? Yeah, Fionua. Oh, I have Flanagan. no idea. I've never known her real name. I only know her as Eloise. Check it in that's case who I'm she wrong. is. But Eloise is. Hair was oh. <laughs> fluffier than I imagined it when I read it the first time. <laughs> and um, it reminded me of my grandma's old hair. <laughs> it was. That, it was the one that she puffy. kept on the mannequin head. <laughs> no, my grandma never wore a wig. Oh. But um, it was very fluffy and. Yeah. Well, she was ready. Really. She's already. She's her hair was already she's did up. for her. Um, <laughs> For this Concert. big event that's going on. Right. I couldn't think of I anything like else. It was nice to see Penny again. Yeah. I think they're my favorite couple by far. Naveen kick ass again. That was pretty cool. Yeah. The, the neck. He the likes neck to snap people's action. necks. Yeah, he chops their necks and snaps them. Yeah, it was a good episode. I had to ADR my lines. Oh, yeah. Uh, looping, additional dialogue replacement, I mm. believe it's called. For a tiny little I, scene. You know where I learned that? It's called additional dialogue replacement. Oh, that's what it's. I learned for. that in the. I think I learned that in one of the DVD extras. Oh really? I thought it was like additional audio. dialogue recording or something like that. Oh, I thought it was audio something. All right, don't forget that you can email us short theories, comments, and love at geronimojackspirit at yahoo dot com. Uh, be sure to visit uh, com and follow the links on the right-hand side for um, G. Jack Beard stuff. Twitter. The Cafe Twitter Press. account. All right, everyone. How should we close this? With a song? You got a song in you? Mm-hmm. Go ahead. Oh, Danny boy. The Lestrovia. Heaven, Sovia, Vila, Flovia, Heaven, Bada, Me, He, Sophie, Bada, Sim, Bada, 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 Anyways. Good night.